cafe anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 1459, 1459. And welcome to Mike's Daily Podcast, where we broadcast from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today, we hear from Madame Rutabaga Valentino Bison Bentley. We get to some interesting news stories. And, and we dance around. No, we don't dance around. Mike's Daily Podcast. Because Mike can't dance around because he's got a right foot that's a little bit sore still. And I have to wear this boot on it. Mike's Daily Podcast. But today we'll have a segment that we'll call Live and Loco. There was a great band in the 70s called Poco. And they had that song. You know this crazy love It comes around That's I think how it went No? It was a song that the Mike's Daily Podcast People later were Hey that's the Eagles isn't it? Well there were members of the Eagles In Poco It was Mike's Southern California-ish Daily That kind of Podcast 70s Yeah Soft hit music Vibe. But let's get out of that thought process of Poco and talk about Lobo. Now that was a great band. Or Los Lobos. That was a Will the Wolf Survive and they covered the music for La Bamba. I guess what I'm trying to say is Facebook was weird yesterday, wasn't it? Could you get on it? Look who just walked in. Hello, Michael Masio. It's Madame Rudevega. Oh. What's wrong with your th- what, throat? I've got the flu. Ooh. The flu? Ooh. Oh, no. Yeah, I guess it's going around. People get their flu shots this time of year. And then that means there's, like, more flu bug people around. And everyone's infecting each other. It's scary. It's pandemonium. That's right, Michael Master. I love it. Ooh. Look who else is here. Hello, Dave, Mike. This is Valentino, the package attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that... Mike, we're very worried that California is going to secede from the Union Day. Yeah! Union! Do you know that? I don't think... I don't think we're gonna do that. No country has succeed, su- su- successfully succeed, seceded. But what are, you know what? It's a world full of... Anything can happen. I think is what you have to think in today's world. I'm going to a wedding today. Yes, the wedding of my ex-brother-in-law. And here's today's podcast picture. It's not a picture of my ex-brother-in-law. But it is a picture of, once again, Basil the Boxer. And once again, Carmel. And in this picture, he's barking at the beach. He likes to bark at the waves. He likes to bark at the ocean and the waves breaking because he's a dog and he likes to bark. And... I like that he's barking at Carmel because it makes me feel like he's barking at all the rich snobs in Carmel. And as we were walking around that day, a couple weeks ago, it was late in the day in the afternoon and evening was starting to come around and people were starting to eat at those crazy expensive restaurants in Carmel. And everybody had the same outfit on, the same shirt, the same colored shirt. All the women in the same dresses. It looked just like Carmel society. And I could not have disliked it more. And I thought, and I, as I looked at all these couples, they all looked bored. They weren't talking to each other. They were mad at something, drinking their wine. It was not the best. So as I say this, I raise a toast to my friend, Jesse, who's getting married today. And I hope his marriage never turns into that. That would be great if that never happened. It's going to be a wonderful wedding. And I think only that they're a lovely, loving couple. And I think only the best for them. And it is going to be held at the City Hall in downtown San Francisco. So after that, immediately we head over to a bar. And then after that, we go to cheese the Cheese School. In the mission in San Francisco And when I say that to those of you Who don't live anywhere around here The mission is 
uh, the mission district, I would I would should clarify. It's not we're actually inside of a mission. One of those old Spanish churchy things. Little camps set up by Juana Paracero. And we sit and we're going to eat cheese. And I guess he's bringing along a pig. I know, that's sad. Poor pig. I mean, what did the pig ever do to us? But it will be a fun and wonderful excursion to San Francisco today. I hope my foot can take it. But someone who I saw recently in a video that I didn't realize, Tom Petty was kind of bloated at the end, wasn't he? He didn't look so good at the end. I saw his last song he ever did on stage, I guess, was at the Hollywood Bowl. The last song he was recorded as performing. And then he passed away shortly after that. The last song he did was American Girl, one of his most famous songs. Because, of course, it was an encore and everybody's screaming, Woo! And he's up there in his jean jacket. And the dude smoked a lot. He did not have the healthiest lifestyle. There's another video going around on YouTube of him and Gary Shandling, who, who he passed away recently as well. And they're meeting, it looks like at Tom Petty's Malibu house where he would eventually die. But Gary Shandling and Tom Petty are meeting and talking and Tom Petty cannot keep his hands off his freaking cigarettes, off his pack of cigarettes, smoking one right after the other. Wow. So, <clears throat> to sum up, don't clear your throat on the mic. And try and stay away from Carmel because people are too rich. And Facebook was weird. Facebook actually was off. I think part of the problem, I haven't seen the full story on it. I think it might have been the fires. Because there was a couple of wacky internet incidents happening yesterday. We are so close to Silicon Valley. The fires were... And we are too here at Cafe Anyway. Very close. We could throw a rock. It'd go right through the window of Mark Zuckerberg's suite, master suite, at Facebook head HQ, overlooking the stinky south part of the bay. And we would do that, and he would promptly uh, say, Nice throw, Mike. So that's what we have here at mikesdailypodcast.com. And the the, uh, we, the website, which gets so much traffic, it rivals Facebook. Mm. And that is where you can go and check out all the past shows and past podcast pictures. And you can help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy. And that, you know, Amazon is promising to hire a bunch of people for the Christmas rush this year. And then a lot of those people go to full time. Someone I work with, he, uh, he also worked part-time for Amazon about a year ago. They offered him full-time. Actually, he was full-time and he didn't even know it. And he declined. Because he had to be there at like 2 in the morning. No. Like 11 o'clock at night. And then he worked all the whole... Yeah, the whole swing shift thing. Lots of lifting. Lots of fun. But Amazon is growing. So if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, go through that link at mikesdailypodcast.com. There's also the PayPal thing, too, if you'd like to help us that way. Hey, you know, there's all the past podcast pictures as well at mikesdailypodcast.com. Let's get to this segment called Live and Loco. Now, I saw this headline. I couldn't believe it. Conservative groups are going to war against McConnell. They're calling for Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. He, you know, the one he talks. He talks like... Something like that. He, they're asking for his resignation with increased vigor over what they see as a betrayal of American wishes. The Senate under McConnell's leadership has, quote, continued to fail to pass conservative policies even since Trump has assumed office. Uh, there are five conservative groups want McConnell and his team of Republican Senate leaders to resign as, po as soon as possible. In order to make way for those who would advance conservative policies. Hmm. Then, Trump. Apparently he was livid. Why, he asked his advisors in mid-July, should he go along with what he considered the failed Obama-era policy toward Iran? 
and prop up an international nuclear deal he saw as disastrous. He was incensed by the arguments that were made by Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State, also Jim Mattis, the Defense Secretary, and others that the landmark 2015 deal, while flawed, offered stability and other benefits. No. Trump did not want to certify to Congress that the agreement remained in the vital U.S. national interest and that Iran was meeting its obligations. He threw a fit. He threw a fit, said someone. He was furious. Now, the story yesterday that I mentioned, the the NBC story, that apparently Trump said, we need to increase our nuclear ambitions tenfold. That apparently... He said later in the day that wasn't true and NBC was lying and it's fake media. So what do you believe? And then he clarified himself and said, well, we need to modernize our nuclear system, but we got, we're big. We got a lot of nuclear weapons. So White House National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster and other senior advisors came up with a plan. One aimed at accommodating Trump's loathing of the Iran deal as an embarrassment without killing it outright. They were going to compromise. Uh, So, he put his team to work on a range of other options, including a decertification option that would involve Congress and would not immediately break the deal. That article in the Washington Post, Trump also frustrated by failures in Congress will try to put his own stamp on health care with an executive order today that aims to make lower premium plans more widely possible. It's going to encounter some opposition from medical associations, consumer groups, and perhaps even some insurers, the same coalition that so far has blocked congressional Republicans from repealing and replacing former President Barack Obama's Affordable Care Act, ACA, Critics say the White House approach would raise costs for the sick, while the lower premium coverage provided to healthy people would come with significant gaps. And finally, as we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley, Hillary Clinton. She, by the way, has uh, joined the resistance. I'm now back to being an activist citizen and part of the resistance. She said in an interview with CNN today, uh, yesterday that she will donate the money Harvey Weinstein contributed to her political campaigns. She will donate that money after multiple sexual assault, assault allegations were leveled against Harvey. It's the year of the Harvey, isn't it? Clinton in an interview with CNN's Farid Zakaria as part of her... Uh, and that is so not the way you say his name. But I think that's close enough. Uh, as part of her ongoing book tour, said she was sick and shocked when she found out about the sexual assault allegations first revealed in the bombshell report by the New York Times and then further reported uh, with a detailed report by the New Yorker. Clinton added it was impossible to give the money back, but she would donate it to charity. And we all know about the money that she makes through her foundation that she donates to charity. To I don't even know what's going on with that. Didn't isn't that over with the Clinton Foundation? I don't know. In 2015, the Clintons rented a home next to Wein, the Weinstein. Next to Harvey Weinstein in the Hamptons. I hope you've enjoyed me reading you these news stories today. It was so enlightening, wasn't it? So we found out that someone doesn't like one plan, another person doesn't like that leader, and that someone's giving back the money. There are a lot of things going on today. And that Carmel has a beach that my dog likes to bark on. And that's pretty much today's show. I'm off to a wedding in a couple of hours. Tomorrow morning, I'll be even more (laughs) discombobulated. Uh, But I will bring you the report from this amazing Thursday wedding. I'll let you know how that goes on the next show. As well as we will have Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. (laughs) 
Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.